Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by 3++ Plus is the new black Kirby's blog. My name's Rupert and this tutorial is about speed painting grey knights. I went down to a local hobby store called Heroes and Legends Games which is in Tolworth which is in the South London slash Surrey region and I bought myself Caldor Drago and this shows you the stage that I got to of base coating the figure and I've wet brushed bolt gun metal for the silver, I've wet brushed shining gold for the gold, I have painted on red gore flat for the red areas, dark angels green for the green, for any bits of scroll parchment or bone I've used snake bite leather, for the uh, eyes I've mixed enchanted blue with some black, caught it down and then whacked that on. I would have normally done it differently, I would have used regal blue but I didn't have any. I'd recommend regal blue watered down, put that into the uh, eye sockets and then that lets you have the base colours for your object light sourcing. And for the NMM silver I've used codex grey, for the NMM gold I've used snake bite leather once again. And that's all with the base coating done I believe. So yeah, if you've not been long to uh, Heroes of Legends in Tulworth, South London, I would definitely recommend it. They've got a great range of different uh, games. It's not just Games Workshop, they've also got Flames of War, they've got Mantic, they've got Warlord, Malifal, if that's how it's pronounced. They've got loads of different stuff down there. Definitely check out the website, give them a call. I'll put a link up on the video here for you to have a look at that. Here you can see what I've done is I've, to uh, shade the model, I've mixed Chaos Black one part to ten parts water and then just liberally splashed that over the entire model literally every single part and that's going to uh, be my shading having done that I then mixed uh, some enchanted blue with some black and watered it down heavily and then just used that to uh, give a bit of the blue colour that you can see the Evermill team have used on their uh, silver parts uh, ideally I would have used regal blue watered down for that probably something like one part blue 10 parts water, something in that region. So having done that part, that's uh, need to leave the model for quite a while for that to dry. It's going to take a while because there's so much water. But then the fun part comes when you can actually start putting some detail onto the figure. So uh, I've come back and it's time to start putting some detail onto the figure. All of the parts that were base coated with snake bite leather, I'm now highlighting straight up with um, bleached bone. I'm using what I refer to as the line technique. I think I'm using a standard brush at this point. You've got some paint on the brush and you're basically just simply painting on lines. There's no blending going on. It's just a flat colour. You can do this in a math met sort of a ugh, in a method that makes it look as though it's blended to some extent. Um, so the sort of concept is to leave some of the dark colours underneath and just highlight up and it gives this uh, appearance. So I've done that to all of the parts that were parchment, scrolls or bone. And I think later on I'll come back to showing you how to highlight skulls. There's a sort of particular method that works best for doing that. The next part I did, I painted in the eyes. Um, I'll go through this part in a bit of detail as it's uh, something that not a lot of people do. It's this ob sort of object light sourcing and I'm not about to profess to being an expert at it. But um, this is the method that I use. So. As I said earlier on, I've mixed what is essentially is regal blue watered down with a lot of, well, with some water into the eye sockets, and now I'm going to just sort of highlight that up, make it look sort of very basic level, so the eyes are lit up. So you can see that I'm using ice blue. So I've literally just got some ice blue on the brush. I'm just going to paint in the actual lens part of the uh, tactful dreadnought armor eye. I'm using a standard brush here. You could have used a fine detail, but standard brush is all right. Having actually just painted in the sort of lens part, you'll note that all around the actual socket as well, there's blue, and that's because if the lenses were actually lit up, those are the parts that would have reflection coming off of them. Having painted in the actual lens, I'm now just literally painting on lines emanating away from the socket in a straight line as a highlight, and you'll see that go on now. It actually works surprisingly well, and you can take this to a much higher level. I, mean, I could have actually object light sourced the entire sword, but then basically half the model would have been green. Some people like that. I think it looks really cool. Some people think it looks stupid. So I thought for this one, I'd just keep it very simple and just essentially copy 
in a very simplistic method what the Evermelt team have done in uh, the codex. So you can see there the highlights going on and at this point it looks okay, it doesn't really look amazing so just to brighten it up more I've then just gone straight to skull white and highlighted the actual lens and that literally is all there is to painting that in and you can see now a sort of a, an attempted close-up of the eye socket just to show you how that looks I think it actually worked quite well so now we come to the part where I'm painting on the uh, silver armor and I've decided to go straight for mithril silver here there's no real value in going bulk on metal so yeah I've gone straight for mithril once again just using the line technique you need to keep all the lines going in the same direction so on the shield all the lines are going straight downwards if you have them going off in all weird directions it will look stupid keep all the lines going in one direction for me this is typically down uh, if you're painting large flat surfaces then on some levels you may have seen me paint like my space halls you'll note that there's then lines that go at a sort of diagonal and this is only to be used if you're painting on large flat surfaces it won't work on this so yeah just loads of straight lines again and then you'll see that when I paint some of the curved parts there's different methods in doing that and it's just by eye really and some practice essentially it's all the lines are going in basically the same way which is straight downwards and on some of the curved parts like on the foot you'll see that I've just highlighted the edge and that's really all it takes it's very straightforward and there's no real sort of difficulty in doing that for the red I've just used red gore flat again red gore doesn't go particularly well over a black undercoat as you could see when the base coat picture having shaded it it still needs to be brought back up to sort of red color so this is once again painted on with the line technique and once again it's keeping all the lines essentially going straight downwards it was at this point that I realised that having sort of base coated the whole banner that was probably a stupid idea because it made it quite difficult now to go back in and it just had to be a lot more accurate with the brush which was quite difficult based on the uh, way I'd set up the camera it's very difficult to actually get near the model because the camera's sort of between my legs at the moment. Okay so here's the part where I'm painting the cloak and you can see that as I said earlier on the red's not gone on very well over black so I've got some red gore on the brush and you're literally just painting once again in that sort of downward motion but this time along the actual lines that you can actually see already cut up on the cloak so you can see the way that I'm holding the model I'm not doing this on purpose and I sort of from practice I can tell where the height should go but just where the light falls on the cloak you can see the parts that should be highlighted so you can see there that the top edges are actually sort of reflecting more light and so they're going to be the ones that look brighter so just whack the paint on the straight line and you can see that straight away you get some sort of shape to the cloak it doesn't look like a flat bit of red paint anymore okay so having done that I sort of thought that this needs a bit more highlighting up so I've mixed uh, red gore with some white now obviously this gives you a pink tone I quite like that I know some people don't if you instead you don't like you can whack in a uh, blood red or just use blood red and here you can see I've got a lot less paint on the brush and I'm painting the cloak again. Same lines you're painting in, just thinner and less of them and you get more definition and you can see that part is going on very well there. And it really is as simple as that to paint on the uh, highlights on cloaks. So here's me starting to highlight the gold up once more and I've mixed shining gold with some white here. Obviously that does mean that your tone looks like different because you're not having a sort of a true metallic paint anymore you're getting some more sort of flat color to it but it works quite well uh, it's probably something along the lines of uh, two parts shining gold one part white and that gives you a sort of more bright color because I haven't got any other gold colors so just highlight that onto the other parts just picking out the parts that would be most likely to reflect most light and then later on I go to highlight that once more I think I just use plain mithril so yeah you can actually use silver to highlight gold so here we come to the part where I'm going to show you how to uh, highlight a skull and this a skull actually reflects light is that you're going to have a lot of reflection around the orbits so the first part I've painted on is this sort of upper orbital margin so that part is painted on then leave a shade immediately above that and then paint on the frontal bone which is the bit above the uh, upper orbital margin then you can paint on the lower orbital margin uh, then the maxilla and you should have a slight shade between the lower orbital margin and the maxilla and then once again there should be a shade before you then paint on the uh, upper teeth and it really is that simple so I've once again used bleach bone for that and then I later go on to highlight that with skull white essentially doing the exact same thing but less colour used so this clip here just basically shows you how the model is looking at this stage. I mean, you could leave it at this point and not paint anymore, but there's just a few things that are going to 
pick it up a bit more. You can see here that I've done a further highlight on the red and that's really picked it up more. Um, I didn't film this because I was starting to get a little bit irritated by the sort of paint position. All I've done is just mixed in some more uh, skull white into the red and just lined that back on. So to paint the sword I thought I'd try and mimic what the heavy metal team had done. I've not done, as it turns out, I've not done it anywhere near as well as they have but I was getting a little bit annoyed at this point and uh, I, when I was painting so I just come back having worked 24 hours all night so it uh, wasn't the, uh, the sort of best mannered person at this point. So what I've done is I've mixed together some Dark Angels Green probably about 50-50 with Scorpion Green and then just lined on separate parts of the sword. Now if you look the best uh, picture to copy this from is the image of the Dread Knight Power Sword or Nemesis Force Sword um, in the codex and you can just see how they've done it. It's basically uh, graduations in colour from the darkest shade up to the brightest and then back to the darkest then up to the lightest again. So uh, I could have put a lot more graduations on this sword and that would have made it look better. As it turned out I did three on either side which uh, didn't look terrible but didn't look great either. The way to make this look as though it's been blended or to make it look more like it's been blended when it hasn't is just to have a blocked part of colour and then just paint lines joining that blocked part to the other shade. So imagine you've got an area of Dark Angels green and then above it there's a part that you've painted in just flat as the uh, Dark Angels plus Scorpion green. Just to make the graduation look not just there isn't one, just paint some lines along that area. Wait for that to dry, mix some more Scorpion green in and then do the same thing again. But now you're going to be blending that lighter shade with the next lighter shade, which is the 50-50 Dark Angel Scorpion. Keep doing that, keep adding in more highlight. I eventually add in white, and that's really all there is to it. Um, the more time you take on that, the better the outcome will be. And having done all those parts, you then just need to put a highlight on any parts that haven't been highlighted, if that makes sense. So there'll be some areas where along the shaft and along the edge of the blade that would reflect colour. Now, so in this part you can see just that last line being added on and it just gives it that final touch which makes it look pretty good. And that's basically how you can paint a power weapon. Uh, there's other ways of doing it and certainly as I said, the more graduations you get in, the, more, the better it would look. You, can, you could then object light source off of the power weapon. And as I said earlier on, this would end up with you having basically half the model painted that manner. So then I just had to do some tidying up, so the storm bolt hadn't been painted at all at this point, so I just quickly blocked it in with Chaos Black, added some white, lined it, added some more white, lined it, done. Two highlights is enough for nearly anything, I only put on more than that if I just think it just needs a little bit more extra punch. And that basically is it, that's the whole model painted. And so now I'm just showing you a video having based it. All I did to base it was I made sure all of the rocks were flat black. I then dry brushed it with Codex Grey. I then added some white to that and dry brushed it again. Then whacked some flock on. I also uh, gloss varnished the power weapon, the eye sockets, not the object light source parks. They wouldn't actually be uh, a, a glass area. And I also did all of the purity seal red parts, like the wax part. And I also gloss varnish the sort of ampule, the sort of asterisk and obelix special druid drink that he's got on him. And essentially that's it. So um, hopefully you could learn something from that video. If not, apologies for wasting your time. And uh, any questions, feel free to add them in. There's probably a few things I've forgotten to mention as I've narrated this video. If there's another tutorial you want, then go ahead. I'll try and make it better than this one. I uh, need to get a much better camera set up. But hopefully it was useful to you. Uh, thanks very much and good luck with your grey nights. Take care.